Hi, welcome to the Yarn and Yarns YouTube channel. My name is Angela and all the places you can find me online should be linked in the description box just below this video. I will usually be found here on the channel waffling on about my adventures in knitting and crochet and spinning. So thank you very much for joining me this week. I always really do appreciate you spending time with me. I say it every week and maybe it sounds a little bit contrite and corny, but I really do mean it. Um, there are tons and tons of uh, knitting, crochet, spinning podcasts out there. Um, so I really do appreciate the little community that has built up around my channel here. Um, if you are new to the channel, then you are most welcome. I have had a few new subscribers this week. Um, I know that Zoe from the Pins and Needles podcast um, did mention me in her last video. So if you have hopped on over because Zoe mentioned me, then uh, a very big welcome. Of course, if you found me by any other means, you are welcome here too. And that's not forgetting uh, people that have been here before, whether you've watched my videos once or a million times, I really, really do appreciate getting to spend a little bit of time with you every week. Those of you who have visited before will notice there's a bit of a change in the background today. I often record um, from my craft room here at home, which is on the top floor of our house. And it's an attic conversion room. And we've had quite a few warm days um, here in South Wales. Um, over the last few days and it's really hot up up there it's like a greenhouse so I decided to switch up the locations a bit and record from my living room so I've got my lovely spinning wheel um, Edith next to me just in shot uh, keeping me company um, as a little bit of a change in my setup this week I don't know if it's a change in the setup or whether it's just me and life in general um, but I've had to record this intro at least 10 times. I keep stumbling over my words, I don't know what I want to say. <laughs> Isn't it funny how just one little change of route out of the routine can kind of set you on the back foot. I don't know if it is just the change of recording location um, or if it's just you know other general life stuff that's got me a bit discombobulated but if I stumble over my words, if I'm rambling, which I know I am already, uh, then please do forgive me. We've just booked a little break away um, just for a week um, and we've got six weeks to go until that holiday rolls around but it'll be my first full week off since Christmas. Uh, for those of you who perhaps haven't uh, visited before I run a little bricks and mortar yarn shop in Penarth which is a small town just outside of Cardiff in South Wales in the UK. I have owned the business for a good two and a half years now. Um, since last November, I have been in the shop on my own. I did have some help previous to that. Um, so until a couple of weeks ago, I've been working six day weeks um, since last November, the joys of running a small business. I know some of you out there are also small business owners, so you'll know where I'm coming from. And when I close the shop at the end of the day, the work doesn't always stop there. Um, but yeah, over the summer, I'm giving myself an extra day off. So um, I'm closing the shop on a Monday. And that's now become my recording day. But I haven't had a full week off since Christmas. So now we've booked a little break away. I think my energy levels have just whoo, gone and I'm kind of in that survival mode. You know, when you've got like a break or something to look forward to coming up, you're just kind of like going through the motions and getting through those days until your break comes. So I don't know if a little bit of that has kicked in too. <laughs> anyway, this has become a long, waffly, rambly intro. So I needed to stop here and start with um, some of the stuff that you are actually here for. 
Uh, so let's get chatting about what I've been working on this week. I think I'll start with crochet this week uh, because crochet is going to be a fairly quick section. Um, I've added a few more squares for my Babette blanket. Um, if you watched last week's vlog, then you'll have seen me working away on some uh, just four round sort of solid granny squares for my blanket project. Um, so I finished off the four round squares and I've started um, the next section of that blanket that I want to work on which is the six round squares but I'm not going to show you that today because um you know it's just solid granny squares in a variety of different color variations so I'll wait till I've got a bit more to show before I am talk about that one in depth again so for this week I have got a project that I started in the shop a couple of weeks ago um, it's actually going to be a tissue box cover and somewhere bear with me here I have um, a picture in the magazine that this is from of what the project will end up looking like so I have a whole bunch of back issues of knitting and crochet magazines that I inherited from the previous owner of yarn and yarns we don't actually stock um, any sort of periodicals aside from Pom Pom magazine um, but the lady who owned before used to buy all of the um, sort of big named magazines that come out here in the UK um, so we sometimes use them when we're looking for projects or if we've got someone wanting to come in to uh, learn something new or do something particular we often flip through the magazines to see if there's anything that um, sort of takes the fancy um, and on one such occasion, we were flicking through some of the crochet magazines and one of my customers suggested that I should make this uh, tissue box cover uh, for display in the shop. And um, yeah, I kind of figured it would be quite a nice fun crochet project to work on while I have my crochet group on a Wednesday. Um, and so I started it a couple of weeks ago and I am working up the box in some lovely um, local yarn. Um, sorry, it's blowing out a little bit here. I'm facing the window here in the living room, so there's not too much uh, I'm going to be able to do about this because it's sort of a natural colour. That's a little bit better. Um, so this is from a local small holding called Garlic Meadow. Um, they're just a few miles away from us here in Penarth. They produce some nice yarns from their Pole Dorset and Alpaca Flock. Um, so I'm using their Aran weight base to make the majority of this box cover and I have actually finished the body of the box so here it is. Uh, so not super exciting to show you yet, obviously the details are to come um, this one should get finished fairly quickly now. I've just got the sheep's head to make and um, the legs. Uh, so as you can see there's the top there which is obviously where the tissues are going to come out um, it's quite big and floppy at the moment it's actually bigger than I anticipated it would be I think once there's a tissue box under there it will give it some stability so this project is lots and lots of bobble stitch in crochet um, and I have been using a five millimeter hook yeah five millimeter hook um, to work this up the yarn is not um super soft so if you are wool sensitive this probably wouldn't be one that you would want to wear next to your skin um but it's really lovely to work with and yeah i think this is turning out to be a really fun project uh, so hopefully in the next week or so i will actually have this project finished which will be really nice um the pattern for anyone who's interested is called herbert the sheep tissue box cover um let's see if i can find the designer is alison holloway um, I'm not sure if the pattern is available anywhere sort of easily, um, but it does come from issue 20 of Crochet Now magazine, um, but this magazine is probably a couple of years old now at least. Yeah, it's a fun um, project to work on and it's a nice one, or it's been, an, it's been a nice one so far to work on in the shop um, because it's literally just been rows and rows of bobble stitch, uh, so it's one that I can easily pick up and put down. I've seen some really lovely crochet shawl patterns over on Instagram this week. Um, so there's probably going to be some more crochet projects started in my not too distant future. I think we will move on to spinning next. In this section today, I've got a couple of finished spins to share with you and a couple of spins in progress. 
as has become my habit, I've recorded a few little snippets of video as I've gone through the week. Um, so I'm going to insert those in here first um, and then I'll be back to chat a little bit more um, about the projects that I'm working on. I have just finished plying my lovely Cheviot yarn. Cheviot, how do you say that? <laughs> I thought I'd show it to you while it's on the bobbins before I wind it off and give it a soak. Um, so if you remember, I was working on this last week. Um, it's a braid from Wildcraft, 100% Cheviot, Cheviot, um, in a club colourway from back in 2014 that I picked up on a D-stash. And the colourway was called uh, English Country Garden, I think. And I had split the braid um, th into three sections and was um, in the process of doing a fractal spin. And the aim was to just do a traditional three ply with the um, singles once they were finished. And I finished them and here is the yarn on the bobbins. So I'm super pleased with this. I did run out on one bobbin before the others which is kind of inevitable I guess it's very hard uh, to get exact quantities on each bobbin and um, so I've got a tiny little bit that I actually chain plied onto uh, a third bobbin um, and my thinking is if you recall I am hoping to knit some socks with these I have no idea how it's going to turn out it's a bit thicker than the average sock yarn that I knit with so I'll probably do a toe up sock um, just so I can try it on as I go uh, but my thinking is if I ha don't have enough for some reason um, then I'd have another this is still a three ply yarn although I've chain plied it rather than uh, traditional three plied it so I'd have a little bit left over for the top of a sock or something if I ran out uh, but yeah I need to wind these off and uh, give them a soak and then figure out how much uh, meterage I got out of the fiber and then I can cast on and get knitting I'm excited to see um, how this works up I was contemplating just giving spinning a rest for a few days but I can't <laughs> proper addict at this point in time so I was watching my lovely friend Mars who is hey brown berry everywhere I was watching one of her vlogs for the spinner make along that's being hosted by um, Grace who is Babbles Travelling Yarns on YouTube and Vanna Willemiel on Instagram and Mina who is the knitting expat uh, at most places online I think. Mars has been putting up some lovely vlogs on YouTube for her participation in that and she recently ban up some fibre that she had from Owl About Yarn and I actually have a braid of lovely Jenny um, her fibre in my stash which I've had for a little while and um, this is a Falklands Polworth um, 100 gram braid and the colour weight is Tiger so I thought this would be my next spin and I'm just going to spin it just for fun I don't have a project in mind uh, but I thought I could start on the singles and so I'm going to open up this braid in a minute and um, see what the fibre looks like when it's spread out and figure out how I want to spin this I've unravelled this uh, fibre from Jenny Owl About Yarn and it basically goes from this lovely um, sort of deep grey black colour um, through some brown and then onto uh, oranges. So I think I'm actually going to be perhaps a little bit predictable and do another fractal spin. Um, I first contemplated doing uh, splitting the braid in half and then plying it back on itself uh, sort of in the opposite direction. So I'd get like a twist of orange and black. Um, but then because it's such a long colour repeat, there'd be quite a big section of orange so I think in order to take advantage of the real contrast between the orange and the black here I'm going to go for fractal spinning again so um, I think I'll do a two ply fractal this time just to make it maybe slightly different <laughs> than the yarn I've just spun so I'm going to split the braid in half um, down the center and then I might instead of spinning one half uh, entirely in the sort of big long colour pro progression, I might split that again. Um, so I'm doing um, sort of two lengths on the first bobbin and then perhaps four lengths uh, on the second. Uh, so yeah, I shall see how that goes. Um, as I say, I don't have any plans for, for this yarn. Um, it's kind of a spin that I wasn't particularly planning on doing, but um, yeah, I was inspired by Mars's 
uh, lovely vlog to get this one onto the wheel. Let's get rid of that. Doesn't that look fab? <laughs> Uh, if you know me, then uh, you know my love of oranges. Can't wait to uh, have a play around with this one. And it'll be really fun to have a go with um, Polworth, uh, another fibre that I've never tried before. So I'm interested to find out what the spinning experience is going to be like. So yes, you would have just seen me waffling on about my um, Cheviot spin first, or Cheviot. Who knows how you say that? I should really find out. Possibly I never will. <laughs> Uh, but that yarn is completely finished now it has been uh, wound off the bobbins and it has been soaked and it's now all dry and ready to use and i'm really really pleased with how this yarn has come out so this is my traditional three ply fractal from a braid of yarn from wildcraft uk the yarn is definitely a sport weight in the main though there are some probably um fingering through to DK um, spots in this yarn. I am still really, really new to spinning. I am at the beginning of my spinning journey. So um, although my consistency is definitely getting better, um, I've definitely got loads, loads more to learn about spinning techniques. So I'm not super consistent at the moment. Um, but yeah, I couldn't be happier with how this uh, yarn has turned out. Uh, the colours look absolutely lovely um, in the yarn, don't they? Um, it was a gorgeous braid to start with. So I'm really, really pleased with how this has turned out. I am planning on knitting some socks with this. I've, in case you're wondering why I've got two bumps here, the, the bobbins that I've got for my um, spinning wheel um, in case you haven't joined me before, uh, my wheel is a Haldane wheel, which, um, and this is the Shetland model, and they don't make them anymore. So I'm kind of limited in terms of um, what I can spin and the tools that I have um, for this wheel. And the bobbins are quite small. They don't fit tons and tons of fibre, particularly when I come to plying. Uh, so yeah, I had to um, sort of ply this in two different sections. And as inevitably happens, um, it's very difficult to spin an exact amount of fibre to the bobbins that you're working with. And I ended up with a small little bit left over. And I actually um, ended up chain plying this part. Um, so this part is more of a sort of striping. There's a little bit of barber poling in there, um, but the sort of sections were plied back. Um, onto themselves so this is more of a striped yarn um, rather than this uh, sort of blended fractal. I'm knitting these up into socks so um, hopefully I shall get those on the needle soon. And then the second thing that you heard me chatting about um, in that previous section was some beautiful Polworth fibre from Jenny of All About Yarn and I actually, it's my quickest spin to date, I actually managed to finish that yarn look at that isn't that beautiful so again I had an attempt at a fractal spin for this one the color was called tiger and yeah you can completely see that in the finished yarn um, I tried to spin this one a bit thicker which is probably why it end up, ended up being a quicker spin uh, I just did a two ply for this one rather than a three ply um, and this one is definitely less consistent um, in terms of uh, thickness if you can see there's some really sort of kind of thick almost underspun bits in places uh, through to some much much finer if I grab perhaps these two strands next to each other you might be able to see what more of what I'm talking about can you see those so yeah this one here is much much thicker than this one here uh, but I don't mind that at all um, as I say, this was just a really fun spin. I've got no plans for this yarn, um, but hopefully I'll find something lovely to do with it because it turned out beautifully. The colors are just gorgeous. Because I didn't have a plan, I just kind of stripped the fiber down and went for it. Um, this is my first time working with Polworth and it was such a lovely fiber. Um, my braid was a little bit compacted and I think that's probably just because I've had it for a little while and it's been sort of squashed in a um, storage cube. So um, some bits were a little bit difficult to draft, which is probably why I've ended up with some sort of quite thick bits in the yarn. Um, but if I am ever able to get my hands on some more Polworth, um, I think I might try and spin it as singles because the singles were so round and full and lovely. Um, yeah, I just think it would probably be quite a nice one to spin a single, maybe then give a really hot wash to uh, felt the singles. 
if I can just show you this bit here, you might get a better idea of what I mean. Um, if you can see that sort of uh, deeper orange um, ply there, there you can see how round and lovely, hopefully, uh, that fibre is when it's spun. Uh, so yeah, they are my two finished spins uh, for this week. Hat, maybe? <laughs> My two spins in progress, one of them you can see up here on Edith. I won't uh, take the bobbin off, but I have started to spin up some Rolags. I'm not gonna say too much about that because I've recorded another little section of video and I think I'll pop that into next week's because my spinning section is already quite long. Um, and I have also got a spindle spin on the go. So um, I've just got some um, bumps of fiber, which I believe to be merino. Um, I picked these up in a sort of um, scrap bag, I guess you would say from Woolly Knit when I went to Wonderwall. Um, this particular bump has got lots of lovely pinks and greens um, in, and I'm just spinning that on my really basic drop spindle. This was the first drop spindle that I ever purchased from Hilltop Cloud. Um, and yes, yeah, a spindle I keep coming back to again and again. Um, it's a really nice weight and yeah, it's, it spins most things really nicely. So, and it's a good one for me to take around. A lot of my other spindles have either got resin or stone um, whirls. And I'm afraid that if I'm out and about and I drop them, then they will break. So uh, yeah, this is a good one because it's pretty hardy. That brings us finally on to knitting and I have one finished object and a couple of works in progress to show you in this section today. If you have been following along for a little while then my finished object this week is going to be of no surprise to you. I actually finally finished my Nordiska jumper. So here she is in her full glory. Yeah, I'm really thrilled with how this has turned out. I haven't yet got round to taking any photographs of me wearing this. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really pleased. The pattern is from Boyland Knitworks and the yarns that I used, uh, the main colour is Purple Moon from uh, by Miranda May, who is a local indie dyer to me based out of Cardiff. And then the um, light yarn with the sort of purple and orange speckles is from Antler and Acorn. And the orange yarn is from Periwinkle Sheep. And this is this this orange yarn is the skein that just keeps on giving. James bought it back for me when he went on a work trip to Seattle a couple of years ago. And I have finished um, a shawl, which I used this yarn on the border. So that was the amulet shawl, um, which you can have a look on my Ravelry page if you're interested in having a look at what that shawl turned out like. So I used it for the border on that. I've used it for um, obviously some of the colour work detail in Nordiska and there's still a little bit left so I might get some heels and toes for a pair of socks out of what's remaining so yeah that's the the skein that just keeps on giving. <laughs> there's probably not masses to say about this project um, that I haven't said already because uh, this has been on my vlogs for many weeks now. <laughs> And I've been working on it quite a lot, so I've been talking about it quite a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm just pleased with how it turned out. I did a couple of uh, modifications. So I extended down the body. Um, the pattern calls for, once you've uh, split for the arms, the pattern just calls for one inch before you start the colour work. I think I ended up doing about four inches before I started the bottom colour work. Um, I also, what else did I do? Ah, because I wanted to find out how much yarn I had left over, I knit the sleeves uh, before knitting the body. Um, that meant I ended up having to graft the sleeves underneath because um, I didn't have stitches there to pick up. Um, but you can see where I've joined that uh, there, but obviously that's right under my armpit. And I don't often wander around with, you know, my arms in the air um, getting people to closely inspect my armpit seams so that shouldn't really be a problem at all <laughs> really really enjoyed knitting this pattern and yeah I'm looking forward to some cooler weather so that I can wear this thing I've got two works in progress to share with you and um, both of these are actually new cast-ons so the first one um, 
last Tuesday, I went into work after my weekend break and I realised I didn't have any knitting in the shop with me. And on a Tuesday morning, I facilitate a group at the shop. So um, aside from making cups of tea and maybe helping people out if they get stuck on their projects, I'm able to sit and knit for a little while. And I usually have a couple of projects hanging around the shop. And I got in on Tuesday and thought, oh, I don't have anything. <laughs> So I ended up starting something new um, and this is um, a project that I'm knitting again from uh, Miranda's Yarn, um, my, the local indie dyer um, who I stock in the shop and this is her Crocus colourway which is a lovely um, colourway which has sort of lots of the sort of natural white uh, sort of background colour um, and then speckles of orange and blue in the yarn and I decided to knit just a, sh a shop sample um, I've got a few pairs of socks hanging around the shop uh, so I thought it'd be quite nice to just knit a really simple baby jacket um, as, as I say just as a sample to have hanging around the shop um, so I have started just a garter stitch jacket and it's all in pieces at the moment so there's not really tons to uh, sort of show you but I have a back Two fronts, and a sleeve already done this week. Uh, small project, so it doesn't take long to knit up, and it's basically garter stitch all the way, so um, it doesn't take uh, sort of any concentration at all. Um, I've cast on for the final sleeve, so yeah, hopefully that will be finished. Uh, before too long and I think it will make a nice sample um, to hang up in the shop and just show something else that can be done um, with these lovely yarns um, yeah and the this colorway is gorgeous isn't it um, with the um, sort of speckled nature the blue and then you've got some lovely sort of mustardy and uh, sort of sunshiny yellows and a few sort of dark spots of orange um, completely in my wheelhouse this colorway so I'm really enjoying knitting on that. Um, I'm knitting on 3.25 millimeters the whole uh, thing. There's no change for ribbing or anything like that. Um, and the pattern is by Serdar, uh, but it's just a really basic raglan garter sleeve baby jacket. So um, I'm sure there's plenty of patterns like that out there. And then my second work in progress is also a new cast on. And, um, oh, I'm just gonna show you before I get the project out. I'm keeping this in a project bag that I made for myself ages ago. Um, but this weekend here in Panath, we had the um, Panath Open Studios Trail. So a bunch of artists and makers in the town that I live in open their homes and their studios uh, for people to uh, sort of go in and have a look at what they're working on. Um, my lovely friend Sarah Fisher, who is a local felt artist, um, had her studio open. So I popped along to see her yesterday um, she had this gorgeous uh, birdie brooch um, made from her handmade felt and I just couldn't resist um, bringing him home with me so I thought I'd pop him on my uh, project bag while I'm working on this project. So I am knitting with my hand spun, yay! <laughs> so a couple of videos ago I showed you uh, a lovely green gradient that I spun up from some beautiful fiber that was gifted to me by Caroline, who is uh, the wonderful brains and talented dyer behind Colourful Creativity. We did a swap a little while ago and she sent me some of her lovely fibers. But I spun up one of the fibers that she sent to me and it was a gradient of lots of beautiful greens. You can't see it because I hand wound this ball. Uh, but I decided to cast on a cowl and um, as I was spinning this, I, I don't know why, but just a really simple feather and fan um, pattern kept popping into my head. Uh, so I figured I'd do myself a sort of close fitting cowl um, in this gradient using the feather and fan pattern. And this is how far I have got. So as you can see, I've put in quite a lot of work on this. It's such an addictive knit. Um, it's a really simple pattern repeat. Um, and yeah, I've just wanted to knit, knit, knit away on this. So I've, all together there were five colors of green in the gradient that I've spun. Uh, the dark green, the olive green, this sort of meadow green. I'm just onto this grassy green now. So as you can see, there was slightly less fiber um, in that um, sort of third section there. But this cow's already nice and long. Um, and then after this green that I've just um, transitioned to, there's a much brighter uh, green to come. But I think, 
I think I'm probably going to leave that out of this cowl because I think the four colours um, will be enough to sort of scrunch down around my neck and keep me warm. Um, I'm not going to try it on because it's on a short sort of circular so I don't want to kind of stretch that out and lose my stitches but uh, yeah so I think I'm going to carry on until this green that I'm currently working on runs out. And then what's left over will be going into another project. Um, but as I have waffled on for ages today, um, I won't talk about that project until I actually get it on the needles. I was going to maybe have a chat about some of the things I'm planning on knitting with some other um, yarns that I've spun up recently. But I think this video is going to be quite long enough. So um, I, on that note, I'll leave you in a little bit of suspense. <laughs> cliffhanger tune in next week folks <laughs> uh, so yeah I shall talk about that project um, as and when it actually comes to fruition but yeah I just wanted to reassure you that the yarn won't be wasted okay so that really is everything that I have to share with you this week um, I hope that you are able to do some of the things that you enjoy this week and until next time great big golly hugs to you all bye for now